Hey, thanks for joining us. Maybe morning, noon, or night, wherever you're at. But uh, I thank you for coming alongside of us and having another cup of chaplaincy. We're dealing with the Advent, and we have four themes that are widely accepted as um, the season of Advent, and they are hope, love, peace, and joy. And so I wanted to touch on the joy because in Luke, Luke's story of the uh, coming of Christ, there is uh, the joy word is used, and particularly when the angel comes and speaks to the shepherds and says in verse 10, then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. And then, of course, the shepherds receive that, and they run off to find Jesus, and they find him. And uh, I like it, it says they made haste, and they come, and they find him, and uh, they tell Mary what they saw and everything. And Mary keeps them all, you know, ponders them in her heart. And verse 20 says, then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, glorifying and praising God. So there, there's this characteristic of joy in the shepherds as they're, at, they're leaving, and they have this, this exceedingly great joy that they have over all that they've seen, the angels, they got to go see. I mean, this is the Messiah. This is who they've been looking for. And I, and I was just spending a little time on that joy word, just going to take a moment of your time, to express to you a little bit of that word. And David uses it a lot in Psalms, and particularly comes out in Psalms 30, verse 5, about the, the rena word of, of joy. And it's triumphant, it's loud, it's cheerful. You know, this whole idea that uh, rejoicing and praising God and the joy that you have to keep it quiet, keep it personal, and, you know, ditch it someplace that nobody knows about is not very biblical. And... And I think of Habakkuk in the third chapter, the 18th verse, when the prophet, the minor prophet, uses that word rejoicing, glad, joy, and it's dancing and leaping and twirling and praising God. It, it really paints a great picture of David dancing before the ark when it was brought back into Jerusalem. And, the, and another minor prophet says that God dances over Jerusalem rejoices over Jerusalem. I can't imagine what the Almighty looks like when he's dancing, but I can't wait to find out. And, and then I go to Second Chronicles, and there's this word in there about after the temple, uh, fire comes down, and they've, they finish the temple, and the Lord fills the house with his glory, and, and the people leave with great joy. It's, it's in verse 10 of Second Chronicles 7. On the 23rd day of the seventh month, he sent the people away to their tents, joyful and glad of heart for the good that the Lord had done for David, for Solomon, and for his people Israel. And it, that one is interesting to me because it's the Hebrew word, shemaka, that portrays something a little different. It, it, it is rejoicing. It is being glad. And it's become a term that a lot of people use when they go to Israel and they come back. And the best way to interpret it, Shag Shamaka, would be that um, uh, you would be expressing happy holidays. And, or maybe uh, literally joyous festival. And I don't know, some people get really um, caught up on just the term and they don't like anybody substituting anything for Merry Christmas. But, but this whole joy concept of Advent fits so well. And so I, I like it to, to liken it to the expression of joy that we share with one another. And I'll get to how we get it into our hearts and our lives, but the shepherds caught it. And it's interesting to me that Luke really brings out the part that the shepherds play and the part that they play in the, uh, the fourth candle of Advent, joy. Now, I don't know why, but Matthew, he writes about the three wise men, and Luke writes about the shepherds coming, maybe taxable income or something. I'm not sure why, but uh, they both take parts of the Christmas story. And so then the shepherds go, and they're glorifying, and they're praising God, and they're rejoicing. And I, I just wanted to speak to you a little bit about this joy word, because it really 
is a divine word. It, it's not something that you can sell at store. You could, you may make a child. I got grandbabies, and my gifts are just gonna push them over the top. I mean, uh, I'm avoiding drums this year, but. Uh, they just love the gifts. Grandpa gives them a gift and they're going to rejoice. They're going to be happy and they're going to have joy for a while. I hardly remember, but maybe one or two gifts that I ever got at Christmas that um, come to mind that gave me joy because it's not lasting. Here's the thing about God's joy. And Jesus brings this out so well in John chapter 15. I love that. It's probably the, the most marked up chapter that I have in my Bible is John 15. And Jesus talks about his joy and his joy being uh, fulfilling for us the fullness of his joy. And it brings out quite clearly that it's divine. It's not something you're purchasing at Toys R Us. It is divine. It's the divine impartation of God's joy to us. And so as we come to the end of 2020, one of the biggest things that we're going to find great joy in is just getting this year behind us and getting into 2021. But I wanted to talk to you in closing this about obtaining joy and joy that's sustainable and uh, making it work for you. So Jesus says in John 15 that, that he's imparting his joy into the disciples. And of course, we know how that took effect in their life. We see Acts 16, verse 25, when Paul and Silas are in prison, and you can't quarantine this joy because it comes from the inside out. It doesn't come, it's not coming through the front door of the gates of the prison. I don't care if you're an inmate and you're listening to this, as some of them are in Alaska, you, you can't quarantine this joy. It doesn't come that way. It's divinely imparted. So understand that. So how do you obtain this joy? Well, here's three things to pursue and obtain joy in your life. Pursue the joy giver. It all starts with Christ. Make Christ Lord of your life. Open up your heart's gate and say, Jesus Christ, come into my life. Set up residency right here. So that's pursuing the joy giver. Listen, if you want something, you go to somebody that has what you want and you ask. So that's where you begin. And then the second thing to pursue is pursue his presence. And in the Old Testament, David did this, Solomon did this. So many places throughout scripture, they pursued the joy giver and pursue his presence. And in his presence is fullness of joy. I'm not talking something foreign. I'm talking the biblical principle of being found in the joy of the Lord. And so pursue uh, his presence and cultivate it is, is part of what I'm talking about that. So pursue the joy giver, pursue his presence, cultivate just the presence of the Lord in your life. Talk to him, call out to him, speak it out, rejoice in him, give thanks to him. And, and he inhabits the praises of his people. So there just is, is a natural journey that God makes to us and puts that joy in our heart. And here's the third thing. Pursue others who have joy on display. You know who they are. They just, they just have it. And, and you, you want to, it's contagious. So get around them. It's not that they can, they can divinely impart it to you, but they know how to connect. They know how to uh, put it on display and cultivate it and they'll help you. So get around some other people that just know how to rejoice. And that's my word to you. I do pray that you have a wonderful Merry Christmas. We'll be back next week with a, uh, a final word just before Christmas Day. But I pray the very best for each of you. God bless you and may God just fill your heart with joy.